Hey, what's going on guys? So, uh, it's Anson. We're back with another video. I'm going to show you guys how to add multiple roles uh, with your Discord bot. In the last video, I showed you guys how to add a simple role using the question mark add command. And uh, this time, I'm going to show you guys how to add multiple roles because that's a lot easier. So, for this tutorial, it's really dependent on how your role names are set up. Uh, so, I'll do a little bit of explanation. So, right now, you can see that all of my roles uh, have alphanumeric characters. Well, it pretty much doesn't have any numbers, but some, some, role, some role names have a uh, space. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is when we pass in the roles, we want to separate it with a comma. Now, you don't have to separate it with a comma. You can separate it with a uh, slash. You can separate it with a colon. You can separate it with whatever you want. Okay, but the reason why I'm using commas is because it's the easiest. And the reason why we can't just separate it with a space is because some roles uh, might have a space that's part of their name. So, for example, if I, you know, just did, you know, if I just did this, where I just got rid of all the commas and I just expected to add ourselves to all these roles, the script is going to think that computer science are two different roles when it really should just be one. Okay, so to make it easier, we're just going to separate with a comma. Okay, so when we send this on our server, the bot is going to basically take this argument. It's going to split it up into uh, different arguments. It's going to it's going to return it as an array, and uh, we're going to basically loop through all of these role names. We're going to check to see if the role name. If we're going to check to see if there is a role that exists that matches this name, and we're going to we're going to do our pre our uh, checks that we did in the last video. Okay, so if you did not watch the last video, I highly suggest you do, but don't worry, I'm going to walk through you guys the whole process, so it's not like uh, you guys are going to be left empty-handed. Okay, so in the last video on line 21, all this does is it just gets us a substring. So you can see that right now when we enter this command, right? I only care about the arguments. I don't care about the command name because we already know we already know that the user is trying to add themselves to the role. Okay, so right now I just need the arguments. So... Uh, you can see that the dot substring function, what this will do is it will give us a substring starting at the specified location. In this case, we want to start at location number 5, which is the index, which is where this T is. Okay, so anything before that we don't care about because the question mark, remember, strings are zero indexed. So what that means is the first character in the string is always going to start at zero. The second is one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, the question mark is at zero. A is one. D is two. D is three. Space is four. And then T is five. Okay, T in this case is the first uh, argument. It's the start of our first argument. Okay. And obviously, if they mess it up, then you just tell them that you messed up. Try it again. Okay, so that's what this is doing. It's getting us the uh, argument. So if I log this to the console, you're going to see. I always want to show you guys, uh, you know, that this what the result is before doing everything all in one go. You can see that when we log args to the console, the value is all of the arguments without the command name. Okay, which is good. And what we're going to do next is we're going to split this string. Okay, because right now this is a string. We're going to split it up into... Uh, an array of elements okay so we're going to call the dot split function and we're going to separate it with a comma and space as our delimiter this is called a delimiter or a separator it's going to separate our entire string based on the separator slash delimiter okay so you can see that since everything is separated with a comma space it's going to look for every single comma space. It's going to take that element before it. It's going to put it in the array. So it's going to put Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Computer Science, Streamer, Twitter, all in an array for us. So if we console the log role names to the console, and if we uh, paste this back in, you're going to see that we have an array. Now, one more thing that I want to do is I want to... I don't want to handle duplicates, so what I'm going to do, the easiest way to kind of like, not really remove duplicates, but to, you know, uh, not process duplicates, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this array to a set. So to do that, we're going to create a new set. So we're going to say let role set equal new set. Okay, so if you don't know what a set is, sets are basically just another data structure. And the nice thing about sets is that every element in a set is unique. So if you try to add, uh, you know, an element that already exists in a set, it's not going to really do anything. So if I pass role names here, what's going to happen is you're going to see that Twitter is not going to be in the set two times. It's going to be there once. So this is a good way to kind of like not really get rid of duplicates, but, you know, uh, 
kind of like, you know, convert it to a set to uh, avoid processing duplicates. And you can see we have a set. This is not an array, but this is a set. Okay, awesome. All right, so from here on, all we're going to do is we're going to loop through the set. We're going to iterate through it. And the easiest way to iterate through a set is using the for each function. The for each function is also, is very similar to the arrays dot for each function. So you'll notice that if we did, if you want to use the for each function on an array, you can do so. It works the same way on a set. Okay, so the for each function takes in a callback function, and this callback function is used to process the current element. Okay, so again, for each kind of works like a loop, a for loop. So uh, we're going to call this roll name. And over here, we're going to just copy and paste all this code inside here. And the only thing that we're going to change is this args. So instead of args, it's going to be roll name because args is no longer uh one role name it's 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 going to be multiple different role names okay and we're comparing it so every single time we pro every single time we iterate through each role name we're going to check uh, to see if that role actually exists in the guild okay so if you watch the last video you'll know exactly what the script does but don't worry i'm going to walk you guys through it Okay, so on line 26, let me zoom in a little bit. On line 26, what we're doing is we are calling the for each function. The for each function takes in a callback function, and that callback function is used to process the current element. So you can do whatever you want. You can log the element. You can uh, concatenate the element with you know another string. You can multiply, do arithmetic operations. You can do whatever you want. But what we want to do is we want to take that element, take the role name, right? It's going to be Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Computer Science Streamer. We're going to take that role name, we're going to call cache.find. So cache is a property that exists on the role manager. Okay, so you can see on line 24, we have we are destructuring the, the cache property from the role manager. This cache property, it holds all of the roles that exist on the guild. Okay, so this is, uh, this is new in version 12. In version 11, you can just do message.guild.roles.find. But it's a lot different in version 12 because they use role managers. Okay, so we reference the cache. The cache is a collection, which is also a map. But we're calling, it has the method find. So we can use this method. We pass in a callback function. This callback function is a predicate function, which means that uh, it's going to, it's ba it basically returns a true or false uh, value. Okay, so we're going through every single element inside the collection and we're returning the first instance where the role name matches uh, the role name, right? Where we're saying role.name.toolercase equals role name, okay? And then if this returns the existing role, okay, so what we're doing here on line 28 is we're checking to see if that role actually existed. It's going to return a truthy value, which means that there's an actual role object. And then inside here, we're just checking to see if the role, uh, if the member that is trying to add themselves to the role, we're checking to see if they have that role already. So if they do, it's going to say you already have this role. We're then going to check to see if the role itself has certain permissions that we do not want the user to have. So for example, you want to make sure that the users are not able to add themselves to any administrative role or any moderator role. Okay, so that's what we're doing over here. We're checking the permissions. And if both of these things are false, we're going to go into the else case and then we're just going to add them to the role. Okay, that's really all this code does. Again, I highly recommend you watch the last video so you get a better understanding. But hopefully, I think I did a great job at explaining everything for those who are just new to this video. So if I save this and if we run this right now, you're going to see that right now we have a couple of roles. So now if I paste in this real quick so i will mention to you guys that the streamer role and the twitter role uh both have permissions that that the uh, bot will not allow you to add it to so if i paste it over here you can see that we have we were trying to add ourselves to f six roles right but twitter is a duplicate so we got rid of the duplicate by converting the array to a set and then you can see that you cannot add yourself to the role was printed out twice that's talking about the streamer role and the twitter role if i look at the roles over here Okay, you can see that we were only added to, wait, did I say Twitter? Wait, Twitter, uh, wait, which roles were we not added to? Uh, Twitter, Snapchat, oh, is it Facebook that I, I forgot which, oh, it was Facebook, sorry. It was Facebook was the one with the kick members permission. Okay, so yes, Twitter is fine, but Facebook and Streamer 
are the two roles that have permissions that uh, that the bot will not add themselves to because it has you know the kick per kick members permission, okay. But the other three roles we were added to, which is great. So that shows that this actually works and we did all of the uh, security checks that we needed to do. So that way a user cannot just add themselves to like the administrator role, right? And another thing, a couple things I need to mention um, that I mentioned in the last video, but I'm going to mention again, is make sure your bot actually has the permission manage roles. And you also need to make sure that if you want to add your bot to certain roles, you need to make sure that bot's role is higher than all the roles that you want the bot to be able to add users too because for example i cannot add myself to the moderator role so if i try to do add moderator it's going to say something went wrong because we have a uh, discord api error missing permissions because uh, you cannot add yourself to you cannot add a user to a role uh that is higher than your current role okay so the bot cannot add my cannot add any user to the moderator or admin role because those two roles are higher than the bot Okay, so hopefully this made sense, and um, if you have any questions, just join my Discord server, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.